Good evening. I want to first acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is that it probably seems very silly that I'm using a microphone in this intimate space, and it's, but here's why. Uh, we are live streaming, thanks to our City Channel team, um, so that folks at home can, can watch this meeting and, and hear the conversation. They will not hear anything we're saying if we don't use this microphone. So um, even when we move into Q&A, we're gonna ask anyone who has a question to, to wait for us to bring the microphone over to you so that your question is heard by our, our neighbors at home. Does that sound good to everyone? All right, uh, we're gonna have Pastor Ken from um, ACAC come up and welcome everyone. Uh, Sharon White is also uh, half of the welcoming team. Um, I'm Pastor Ken Turnbull. Uh, this is Allegheny Center Alliance Church. We love having these meetings here, particularly when they involve improving our community and making it safer. Uh, this is the old community house. They call this the friendship room, so this is the right place to have meetings. And hopefully in about eight weeks, we'll have the bigger community hub ready to go for you. Hello everyone, I'm Sharon White. I am the community care director here, so I'll be involved with a lot of community things and working with all of you. And uh, I've been on staff here for 23 years and in this role for two years. Nice to meet you. Thank you both. Uh, this church is always a willing host for us uh, at the city when we need to do meetings in the north side and we're always thankful to you all for opening your doors and providing this space. Um, so my name is Rebecca Rinaldo. I manage the mayor's office um, of neighborhood services. In a nutshell, that is the team that manages constituent relations and neighborhood-based outreach for the city of Pittsburgh. Um, I'm gonna, well I guess that's right, Patty, you flagged me that I put this slide in the wrong order. So first I'll do the agenda before I introduce everyone else. Uh, we'll do some introductions and uh, then just go over what the format for the meeting is tonight. Um, our Domi team will take us through the technical presentation about this project. Um, and then we'll do some, some Q&A. And um, also, we are gonna have a very brief update from our friends at the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy on some work they're doing in this area as well. Um, and that's it on the agenda. So, okay, quickly I want you all to just know everyone who's here from the city. Um, if you guys can just either stand or raise your hand. Um, so Michael Malloch is our municipal traffic engineer from the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. Patty Kearns, one of our project managers and uh, the manager for this project at Mobility and Infrastructure. Uh, Jessica Farrell from our neighborhood services team who signed you all in is over here. Um, Audrey and Emily are from the Mayor's Communications team. They are working closely with Heather from City Channel to make sure this meeting is accessible for folks at home and running the slides and everything. And then um, Mohammed, the, uh, the we know you are here, from Councilman Wilson's um, office, the, Councilman Wilson's Chief of Staff, um, who also uh, helped us um, con significantly to convene this meeting. So it's always helpful when um, council members are, you know, helping, helping and run the show and get, get the meeting together. So thank you guys for getting the space reserved and for all your advocacy for, for this project. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so like I said, um, our Domi team is gonna run through um, kind of a technical presentation about what's in store for this project. They'll kind of review what we've heard from the community in past um, conversations with you all about this project and what you can expect. Um, and then, and we just ask that you hold your questions until they are done with their presentation. Um, and then we will move into Q&A. Um, for the folks watching at home, we are sorry that we don't yet have um, the ability to do a true hybrid where you can ask questions from at home, but there is um, a way to submit questions on this project's engage page. Uh, we'll share the link for that at the end of this meeting. You could also just right now uh, Google North Avenue Signals and Safety Pittsburgh and I'm pretty confident that it would be in the top of the results that turn up. Um, so when we do move into Q&A, uh, we just ask that everyone stay respectful, um, not only of, of this space, but of each other's time. So if, if you hear your question asked by someone else, we ask that you yield your time and not repeat it so that everyone in the room has a chance to speak. Um, 
and we welcome your passion. If we end up having some points where we disagree, we just ask that we do it respectfully and remember that we're all here spending this beautiful evening inside because we care about our neighborhoods and we're all coming from, from a, a good place. So is everyone in agreement with these norms and ready to move forward? Okay, so I'm gonna hand things off to Patty. And don't forget about the mic situation. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. So for those that have, that have never heard about the North Avenue Signals and Safety Project, we'd like to, we'd like to talk about the project location. Uh, so during alternatives analysis, we looked at the North Avenue corridor from Brighton Road to East Street, as shown on the screen here. Uh, moving forward, as we get into preliminary engineering and final design, we're gonna focus that in on Arch Street to East Street. Um, and that's primarily because of the results of the alternatives analysis, as well as some funding constraints. So let's talk about the project purpose. Uh, the purpose of the North Avenue Signals project is to update outdated traffic signal infrastructure and improve safety for people walking, crossing, and taking public transit along the corridor. And I, I'm a soft speaker, so if I if you can't hear me, please let me know. <laughs> please talk louder. <laughs> All right, good deal. <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about the background of the project. Um, there is a long, there has been a long-term need um, for the to update that infrastructure that I talked about and improve safety and accessibility throughout the corridor. We've heard that from the community, um, and we've seen that in the crash data that we've collected along the corridor. Uh, from 2017 to 2021, there were 49 crashes reported along this corridor in our project site. I want to point out that six of those were pedestrian crashes, and the highest frequency of crashes occurred at Federal and North. Um, they had a total of 13 crashes, three of those being pedestrian included, sorry, three of those crashes included pedestrians, and one of those crashes included a cyclist. So with the need established, we moved into uh, the planning and scoping for the project in 2020, where we held our first community meeting in September of that year. Based on the input that we heard from the community, we rolled into the alternatives analysis for this project in 2021, bringing AECOM and a couple others on board to investigate different alternatives or options to solve these issues along the corridor. They evaluated two alternatives um, as part of this analysis, one being a pedestrian-focused alternative and the other being a transit-focused alternative. With those, focused, with those alternatives defined, we went to the community again to um, uh, find out, get some input from you folks about which alternatives you, pervert, you preferred. And based on that input, we created an, a hybrid alternative featuring the best of both of those alternatives. And that's what we're calling the recommended alternative. So with this recommended alternative, we're proposing a road diet along North Avenue. Um, we'll have a, re or what's, what's called a reduction of lanes. So we're gonna maintain uh, one lane in each direction along Arch and Cedar uh, with the addition of a left turn lane where needed. Uh, intersection bump outs and pedestrian islands will also be added to the corridor to shorten the pedestrian crossing space and improve safety and accessibility between the neighborhood and the park. Bus pullouts and queue jumping technology will also be implemented at North and Federal. That's to reduce bus blockage uh, while boarding and reduce delays by prioritizing buses at the signals. At every signalized intersection, we're gonna include what we call pedestrian leading intervals. Uh, that's a, a three second head start for the pedestrian walk phase before traffic gets that green light. We're also gonna include additional on-street parking um, that will serve as a buffer between the southern sidewalk and live traffic. So this is what the recommended alternative looks like throughout the corridor, starting from the western limits at Arch Street. As you can see, we're gonna improve the signal infrastructure at Arch and Federal. 
Uh, the pink indicates parking along the corridor. And then as you can see, the blue areas are our proposed bump outs. I want to point out um, at this mid-block crossing, the side street crossing, we're also including a pedestrian uh, island. Again, to kind of shorten that pedestrian walk space, make it safer for pedestrians um, coming from the neighborhood to the park. Um, also, we have the bus pullout space at Federal. Um, that's where that queue jump will occur as well. Uh, there will be a Q&A at the end. If you don't mind, I can go through all that. Okay. Good question, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so moving east, um, we're replacing the signal at Sandusky. Again, pink is showing that parking that we're proposing, and blue is showing those bump outs. We have another pedestrian island at Boyle Street. And uh, one thing I do want to mention here is right now we're showing landscaped median. Um, unfortunately, due to some funding constraints, we're going to implement concrete medians uh, with our project with the potential for landscaping by the community at a, further, at a, a future date. So again, moving east through the project, we're going to update this, the signal at Cedar Avenue and the, the other one at James Street here. Um, again, pink is the, the parking proposed with this project, and blue are the bump outs. Uh, again, you know, shortening that pedestrian walk space, uh, promoting accessibility, and hopefully increasing safety along the corridor. One thing you may have noticed uh, on the exhibits is the exclusion of a bike lane. Uh, we are not proposing a bike lane along North Avenue. Um, however, we will install bike racks along North Avenue for cyclists accessing the businesses. Right now, we're encouraging cyclists to use existing biking facilities uh, nearby, um, more specifically the Allegheny Commons Trail through the park. So one of the concerns that we hear when we propose a road diet or a, a lane reduction is um, what does that do to my travel time? What does that do to delays? So when we go through and update this uh, signal infrastructure, there are a couple things that we can do to mitigate that. The first thing we're going to do is add those left turn lanes where we see high volumes of left turns. That's also going to limit our uh, angle crashes that we saw um, from that 49 total number throughout the corridor. We're also going to remove the pedestrian exclusive phase at Cedar and North and replace it with a pedestrian recall phase. Um, pedestrian re recall basically means that you don't, you no longer need to push that pedestrian push button to get your walk phase. It just comes up automatically. Um, and that's common in central business districts. Um, we need to time our signals not only for vehicles, but uh, the pedestrians as well. That pedestrian recall um, will occur at every signalized intersection along North Avenue. Another thing we're going to look into is what's called signal progression or coordination uh, between Arch and James, basically all of those proposed signals that we're putting in. For those that aren't familiar with what signal progression or coordination is, it's basically a coordination of that green time throughout the corridor to improve your mobility and travel time. So let's talk about those proposed travel times real quick. Um, with these updated changes, um, here's what we're looking at. Again, these um, times were calculated using a model, some traffic volumes, uh, projected traffic, uh, uh, traffic signal times, and uh, some growth factors. So as you can see, um, we ha do have some additional delays in the eastbound direction um, of anything between 6 and 13 seconds. Um, in the westbound direction, we're actually seeing a decrease, a pretty significant decrease in your travel times, anywhere from 16 to 20 seconds. So let's talk about the project timeline and cost. Right now, we're estimating that this we're going to invest uh, $4.73 million into North Avenue over the next couple years. Uh, Four million of that will be in construction costs, and the other uh, portion of that will be in design, um, as well as that alternatives analysis we've already been through. 
Uh, as I mentioned before, that alternatives analysis wrapped up at the end of 20, well, in the middle of 2022, I should say. Um, and right now you should see some interim paving going on um, outside. That's really just to preserve the life of the pavement until we can get out with our construction. Uh, right now, earlier this month, I, sh um, I should mention, we started preliminary engineering. Uh, we brought AECOM in again to complete that preliminary engineering and final design. And we estimate to, um, uh, that we're gonna complete final design in June of 2024. As soon as final design wraps up, we're gonna go into construction. Um, I'm projecting fall of 2024 to get a contractor on board. And then we're estimating about two construction seasons to complete that work. Um, so that would put us at a completion date uh, somewhere May of 2026. So just wanted to summarize our goals for the project. Uh, the first being to improve that accessibility and safety throughout the corridor. We plan to um, accomplish that goal with those pedestrian islands and bump outs, the leading pedestrian in intervals, and the road diet or lane reduction throughout the corridor. Uh, another one of our goals is to upgrade that traffic signal infrastructure and the transit uh, facilities to improve mobility throughout the corridor. We plan to accomplish this with the use of those bump outs and queue jumping technology. Um, also the signal progression slash coordination um, from Arch to James. And then the removal of the pedestrian exclusive phase at North and Cedar. So with that, I just kind of want to thank you guys for coming out. Um, this is the link to the Engage page that Rebecca uh, talked about at the beginning of the meeting. Um, we're obviously going to answer some of the questions you have today, but if you have questions at any time during the project, uh, please feel free to post them on the, the website and we'll, we'll get you a response. Thank you, Patty. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to welcome up, before we move into Q&A, we're going to welcome up Aaron Tobin from the uh, Thank you. <laughs> Aaron's going to share about a different project, but we figured since we had you all in the room, um, we might as well, you know, help them get the word out about it and it's impacting um, the same community. Thank you. Hi everybody, thank you so much to the Mayor's Office for having me here tonight. I'm going to talk really fast, very brief update, a lot of you have already heard this for the past two and a half years. So I'm here to talk about North Promenade Segment B. Um, segment A was from the Fountain to Federal Street, Segment B is Federal Street to Arch Street and then the George Washington Monument in Alley Thomas Park. Um, if you look at what I just handed out tonight, um, you'll see the scope of work. Um, a few of the highlights are, well, it's basically the same project as segment A, so um, brand new lights are going to be installed in this section of the park where there are actually no lights right now, so that's exciting. Um, new pathways, so you'll see where, um, you can see on the um, rendering that there will be some pathways that we will be removing, some of the diagonal ones, but we're keeping the majority of them. And then uh, installation of new trash, re trash receptacles and benches, and then we're planting, I think, 78 trees in this section as well to restore the tree tent we might be in the second day. So those are the main things. Um, we do have um, some alternates. So um, we are, if we have the, we have the bids out right now. So the bids are due in a couple weeks, and so we're gonna break ground in early June, pretty soon. Um, we're gonna start in the section adjacent to Allegheny Traditional Academy so that we can get that work done so that we're not interrupting um, school pickup and drop off. So that'll be done before September. The project should wrap up by late November, hopefully sooner, but all depends on um, you know, the season and, and the weather. Um, the add alternates that we will add in if the bids come in low are the, um, the, the black fallers, not fallers, I'm sorry, the um, the railings? Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, the railings that you see in East Commons, we will have them at some of the sections along North Avenue to deter people from driving to the park. But those are actually really, really expensive. So it depends on how the bids come in for, for uh, the end of next week. So it's a pretty straightforward project. We're really excited about it. Um, anybody have or we have questions about it? Well, are there questions for Erin about her project? Thank you for having me, 
I had that written down as the first question for today. Sure, absolutely. I, I like talking about this this material. And so, can you hear me in the back? Yes. I, I, I'll do my best. I'm also going to try to hold this mic, Rebecca. <laughs> so don't like let me know. This is hard for me to keeping the mic here. Um, Audrey, could you go back to slide? I want to say it's somewhere between six to ten. See how close. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So, in terms of a bus maneuver, for our partners at PRT, bus pull-offs are less than desirable for their operators because they get they and they exit the stream of traffic. Especially, this is a high use stop right here, so it's kind of competing goals. One goal is to have them outside of the stream of traffic, so they don't impede vehicular movements. Um, it does present a safety concern for them re-entering. And so we have decided to basically focus this on one of the highest like usage stops. And in this case, when we're referring to a bus queue jump technology, like, there are weird traffic signals in this city. Like this is normal, right? This has two legs to it, and so we're used to it. It goes north, federal, and that's it, two phases. This effectively adds a third signal phase that is just for the bus. And so there's a, a separate bus signal that if you've been to, I don't know how much in America this exists, but Montreal has them, um, and other European cities that is only for bus operators. And so I'd almost imagine it's like a third leg of a traffic signal, and that's gonna be detected. And so if there's a presence of a vehicle in that bus lane, they get a very short, like five to 10, five to 10 second phase. And the idea is that this bus, rather than competing with through movements, they just kind of, cut across, slip into traffic, and it helps to keep, ideally, like one delays for users and safety. Hope that answered your question. Yes, it does. And my other question, if you could show the next slide that shows Lorraine Street and Boyle Street. Okay. On, currently, there is a very bad, very badly deteriorated and hardly of use medium strip that closes off traffic from Lorraine and Boyle from turning left. Um, it's a real inconvenience to residents on those two streets. And there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. And every other street coming into North Avenue in every other phase has an ability to turn left. And we were hoping and been requesting that the median strip be removed. So I see a, that green thing is a just landscaping. Is that what it is? That would be a new median. And so it's shown as landscaping, but it will have a concrete but base to it. And I well, we, we're going to have a problem. I mean, we're going to be complaining to a whole bunch of people about um, because I don't think it's going to be removed. I 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 think the, the primary reason would be the fewer side streets that have left turning ability reduces your conflicts. And so it's primarily a crash prevention measure. When it comes to like a more detailed design, I cannot, and this is something I'd have to honestly think about. So we have space here. We have too much space in terms of this road. I think it goes up to 55 feet wide which is like un uniquely strange for a city of Pittsburgh Street. Most of them are 36 feet wide. And so to have our treatments be effective in terms of slowing traffic speeds primarily, we couldn't, we have to build something there. So there has to be concrete. And then I'd have to ask myself if we were to open up brakes in that median, is there space for a car that cannot make it both ways? Because people are going to basically turn out, they're going to queue in that space. Um, is there space for them to safely queue without being hit by an approaching vehicle? And I'm, not, I'm probably not, not explaining myself well, but typically when you have these medians, so if we left a breaking point right here, 
um, it's almost like a two one-way pair of streets that are separated by a physical obstruction. It's pretty common for motorists, if they cannot make the left turn safely, they'll come, they'll turn, they'll queue in the middle, and then at that point wait for the other direction to go. And so question one is, is there space there for a car to s safely queue and not get hit by one direction of traffic? Is there space on any other of the streets coming into North Avenue? And they can turn left on Rosaka and Palo Alto and... <laughs> I think that, that part of the project is not, we're not talking about that section right now, I think. It's the same situation, right? It is a simple, we'll have to look at it, I would say. Yeah, um, you're the only ones that can't turn on. Every other street entering North Avenue can't. Enough to make no sense. If I may jump in here. Um, I do just want to share, which I think you may have touched on, Patty, but um, the city is receiving an overwhelming number of requests from pretty much every neighborhood for traffic calming measures. Um, dangerous driving, unfortunately, post-COVID has rapidly increased in all cities. And so Domi is being very thoughtful and intentional in pretty much every project they do um, around how we can try to um, combat that challenge. Um, so. Uh, if, I, if I'm hearing Mike right here, um, the reason that um, they're recommending that median is, is out of is because of a safety prioritization. Is that yeah? So, but we hear you. It's it's an inconvenience, um, but um, we're literally receiving thousands of requests for people from people to do anything we can to slow people down and reduce the amount of crashes that we're seeing around the city. Uh, all right, I think I saw your hand and then I can come back to you. Thank you, a um, couple of questions. Uh, who put, who would be right turn uh, arrows as part of the, uh, the new uh, system, uh, at least for turns off some of the major streets, like Federal, Longinworth, probably some of the others along the way in March, or would be uh, right turns on driver's discretion. Let me think. So by and large, right turn arrows are a treatment we don't pursue. I mean, in most cases, because there's no, your, your competition at that point's a crosswalk, which is an important, that's a very important conflict. That is the most important conflict. And so if there's a certain number of vehicles conflicting with pedestrians, then we would consider that. Um, for the most part, left turn arrows are the only things that are under investigation for this project. Did you have a location that came to you, like popped up in your mind in terms of this is where I was thinking a right turn arrow would make sense? Probably on the major intersection, which of course uh, on this project would suspect be federal the other trick with right turn arrows is that you have to have a right turn lane, um, which provides, so it delineates traffic that also lets your right turns move faster and then also would um, make your pedestrian crossing distance longer because instead of going across two lanes of traffic, one through, one through, or maybe one through and one left, you're just adding lanes. And so it's that kind of competition that we go through in terms of pedestrian versus motorist. And my, my hunch is that there's nowhere that would meet the level of that need for a right turn arrow, but it's also too early for me to say because we're just entering design now. Second question has to do with parking uh, that's proposed on north and particularly the block uh, between federal and March. So Audrey, can you there go back is on the slide? anticipation that there will be retail uh, on the new development, uh, as well as the existing at Delhi and uh, in Coffee yes. on the opposite side. So is this going to be like limited 15 minute parking in anticipation of retail establishments that are looking for opportunities for people to stop, walk in, purchase something and leave, or is this going to be metered parking? Mm -hmm. Or is that still unknown? I would say it's still unknown. Is there metered parking on this stretch today? Well, there's metered parking. Uh, well, depends on what section of north you're in. Um, I can't identify with meters along north right now. Uh, when you're further down north, uh, to the west, 
that's permit parking. My, my answer would be that, by and large, loading zones like short-term parking to benefit businesses generally don't occur until the business makes that request. And so we wouldn't proactively put such parking here unless someone either in the community, someone working with Council District 1, or a specific business requested it, which pace, at which uh, time we would consider that, absolutely. Sure. That's a good point. And this is probably one of the tougher things that I've wrestled in my brain. And I actually love bicycle traffic. I love it everywhere. Everywhere it's safe. And it's, I ride North Avenue frequently. And so as part of my job, like I can't take myself seriously unless I'm also on a bike. And so I hope that at least I'm not a traffic engineer who's excluding bikes. That will never be me. Um, the question I have to ask, like when I think I'm reflecting on this project is, so the East Street Bikeway, to where I'm standing now, that is one section of this. My biggest concern is that in my mind, the most successful facility on North Avenue goes to Brighton, and that might be thinking too large. And so my fear is that we don't have the space here. The space that we have here, we don't have as a next down, and you approach Brighton, Palo Alto, so on and so forth. And so I am very happy to go back, and Bike Pittsburgh knows about this project, so I have briefed them on this, and I'll also bring them into the discussion in terms of making sure if we put concrete in, that's not permanent, but as close to permanent as it gets. And so I'm going to make sure, one, that Bike Pittsburgh, am I missing a connection that is there that, like, am I missing something? I don't know that answer, because I have the connection map in my mind, but I'm going to go back. We're going to have Scott and Eric. They're going to go over this. Um, the ugly, the ugly truth is that a lot of times parking removal in certain areas kills these projects. And so James Street, I want to say, is a 36-foot roadway. And so if we were to put on-street on facilities there, it would require parking removal. And my personal feelings at that point don't necessarily matter. It becomes a political discussion with your elected officials. And so in my experience is that that's usually a hard lift. Um, but if, if the demand is there and we can do it, I'm, I will never be opposed to removing parking for a bike lane. But I have to do it with the broader community. I hope that reasonably answers your question. I know that's difficult. I have one other question, and that's about the synchronization of the signals. We wait. In the current situation, I didn't mention what the proposal is, but in the current situation, we wait an awful long time to cross from our streets in the neighborhood into the park. Over a minute and a half. It's just too long for the pedestrian to wait. I told my neighbor where I was going tonight, and I said, I, I really hope that whatever they do, they don't make it even more difficult to get from my house to the park. And he said, well, that's why I never wait for the train yeah. yeah. And so you're not creating a safe situation here. Uh, I, and I wondered what speed you're going to synchronize. If it's over 15 miles an hour, I'm not happy about that. I was going to say 18. But 
I mean, I think the speed limit should be 20 myself everywhere in the city. So when it comes to synchronization, that's a tool I mean, there, that... There may be regulations about how high the speed you can post, but I don't know if there's a regulation on how high the speed you can synchronize. There's not. And I hope there's no more than two. Thank you. I, I hear you. I'm writing that down to you, Jerry. Yeah. You're referring you're referring to the Cedar and North traffic signal. So the the rationale is that the the research is very mixed in terms of the efficacy. Uh, so in on one hand, one part of my brain is like, this is perfect. The more people are segmented, the fewer, there's zero conflicts in a perfect world if you do that. Um, and since traffic engineering is, and then your point about signal cycles, Jerry, kind of comes into play here, in that there's, I don't know what this number is, actually 30 seconds, 30 seconds is the amount of time that if a pedestrian has to wait, they get antsy and usually cross against signalization. And so the, um, I almost never put in pedestrian exclusives unless there is a shockingly large amount of pedestrians such that there isn't gaps at all for vehicles and pedestrians to conflict, not conflict, but mix. Or if there's a geometric concern where the like acute angles are rough. Do I have that right? It's either acute, whichever, obtuse or acute. And so in this case, concrete. Make everything shorter. Make it, it's a narrow 36, 36, 36 maybe. Three-leg intersection. In most cases, that wouldn't meet criteria for a pedestrian exclusive. And the, and the goal is that people go against crossing, like they cross against their signal once your cycle length gets to a certain length. And so that's the main thing. And in terms of research, it's mixed. Some studies show that there is a crash reduction, and some shows that there's not, which seems counterintuitive, but that, that it's very mixed right now. One other observation at that particular intersection, if I often see people crossing from the hospital on crutches and their wheelchairs. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I mean, we have, and I can't just design for that user group. I mean, next to a hospital, of course, but I have to expect. I actually was on crutches two months ago. It was a learning experience trying to cross Forbes and Marion on crutches. And so I have to design for that everywhere, not just at a hospital location. And the way I go about that is having pedestrian crossing times that meet a very slow speed of traffic, foot traffic. Um, yeah, I hope that answers your question well. I'm going to get a show of hands and figure out the, the game plan here. All right, good. By the way, I didn't even acknowledge you, Doug. Thank you to the East Allegheny Community Council. This is their president. Um, and I know you guys helped us get the word out about this meeting. We thank you. Um, so we'll start with Doug and kind of work our way back. Can I one second? If I'm missing anything, definitely interrupt me. Okay. Please do. I'm sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> the, uh, I'm glad this picture is actually up. On this picture, there, there's the pink designated parking between James, kind of going towards middle, towards East Street. Right now, that parking is not 24 hour parking. It's parking only for certain times of the day. Is the proposed plan to make that permanent 24 hour parking and remove that restriction where it's no longer parking? Yes. Thank you. My second question is. I think currently there's not a way to turn left from North Avenue going east onto James. I could be wrong on that. There's a sign. There's no other no sign. There's no other 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 sign. I didn't know that existed till now. And so I would probably treat it like any other project. I, actually, this is a good question. I don't, looking at that, I don't necessarily see a, I suppose there's a traffic benefit to not permitting that left turn. I don't necessarily see a safety benefit, but that's the type of thing we can look into during design. I don't know how this community would feel about that change or lack thereof. I'm honestly not sure. Well, I'm glad to hear that you do wish to have the 24-hour parking permanent and not temporary, because yeah. that's, that's what our community is asking. Great. Yeah. Uh, just real quick, during the 
presentation, there was um, data on what the, these changes are going to do for the east-west traffic. I just wanted to highlight that we were, our communities, I care about getting onto the corridor as well. I want to make sure you guys are not just overweighting people that are going across the north side. Like for instance, right now on Cedar Avenue, if you're trying to turn left on the north, about three cars may make it through in the light. And obviously I would expect that to improve, but if you're focusing on getting people from the stadiums to the highway and not people that live here onto North Avenue, um, you know, it may not help us. So. That's the ultimate balance. And I, I will never solely focus on people going from the stadiums to the highway at the expense of the community. Like, that makes no sense to me. And we also have roads that kind of serve that purpose that are not this road. And so in that respect, I would say, no, that's not my main focus. That's not Patty's main focus. I also, like the gold standard of signalization is probably like a 55 second signal cycle. Um, that's like the bare minimum of time you need to basically get your peds here, peds there. That's not gonna happen here either because we're gonna have to have some form of better you know, progression and capacity for North. But like Butler Street, I think, runs 80 and 70 second cycles. Cycle being that from point A, you go around the whole signal phase and you're back to where you started again. And that, I would say, is probably the most I'd want to go on a street that serves a neighborhood. But I can't promise that until we really get into design. But I, I, I'm very well aware of your concern. I personally don't like long signal cycles. answer I, I can't actually say meter parking parking is one like probably the most emotionally charged discussion yeah. and so I never touch that without having full support from council mayor's office as well as my other colleagues in Domi well, first, I, think it's something that should be at least considered. I I have Mohammed <laughs> 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 I stay out of parking discussions as best I can. Here it seems like it's permissible, and this is even a much more 
Yeah. Is Fedora is this shown correctly the direction? No. Okay. That's probably why it's open, because pe so people are not turning left from a door onto north. That's illegal. No, Th that's probably plan, so that's, that's an error. Sorry. I I hear your argument. I need to to have a thoughtful answer. We need to go through a bit of the design process. I'm going to put that in our notes in terms of this came from the community, and then put it to our designer in terms of well, does this make sense or doesn't it make sense? Certainly. Before I may get into the weeds just a little bit, uh, I don't know how extensive the reconstruction is going to be with this project. Uh, the problem you're going to have when you have parking uh, adjacent to the park in the area of the town, people are going to drive on the sidewalk to the park. And that's because you only have a two inch curb. What's the standard curb height and are you going to restore it? I don't know if we have a standard curb height. To be truthful, that's one of the, that's one of the reasons uh, that uh, Aaron has this problem driving into the park to the news reports across from the hospital and that sort of thing. There's essentially no curve there. And I thought maybe when they built the street, they would fix that. But they did. I can I can tell you we don't have budget to do any sidewalk work outside of intersections. It's not sidewalk work. It's putting the street back to the original grade. I don't have budget to put the street back to the original grade. I'm sorry. It's I have to be truthful up front that this is traffic signal infrastructure, and then whatever we can do to make the street safe and why basically narrow it. Parking there will make it safer. Right now, it's really scary to have a bus that will be forty three feet away. I couldn't agree more. Getting back to traffic signals uh, with red lights. So there's a lot of red light running on North Avenue, particularly west to east traffic. Is there anything that you know about in the timing, either in the duration or this segment uh, between red lights, that has any impact on people running red lights? So uh, the, the easiest, quickest answer is if the red clearance phase is appropriately set. And so that is something that we can check, we can check next week. And if, it is, if it's too short, that's something that you'll see. If it's designed to a point that the minimum is two seconds for a red clearance phase, and there are other qualities, primarily the speed of the vehicle and the distance that the vehicle has to travel when they enter the intersection, if that's too low, we'll change it. I'm talking about people running red lights. I mean, the lights red, they just drive through. That I, I, that's a behavioral problem that we we need to solve. I don't have a great answer other than I have a meeting to. I'm not even gonna say that. I, <laughs> I, I don't know how to solve that. That's a behavioral issue. Been any study about either the length of a red light or the interval between red lights that shows any impact on people running red lights? The length of the red light is something that we can look at right now. Okay. Absolutely. In terms of intervals, there might be a study out there. I don't know off the top of my head. I really enjoy talking about traffic signals and traffic engineering in particular. So thank you for the thoughtful questions and thank Patty did a great job. Yeah. And we uh, so please give we uh, we split it up tonight. So Patty started us off. So thank you and thank you all. Um, Audrey, do you mind putting the engage page link back to oh? I, I know I oh, it is weird. up. So again, for the folks at home, um, if you have questions or comments. Um, on your screen should be the link for the uh, Engage project site for this project. Please uh, chime in there and we'll get back to you digitally. Um, I want to again thank um, Mohammed and Councilman Wilson's office for helping us get this meeting together. I want to thank um, the East Allegheny Community Council for spreading the word about it. I want to thank Aaron and the Parks Conservancy for, for joining us to share about their work. Um, I forgot to shout out earlier Daniel and Nick who 
um, are always so wonderful. They come to ev like just about every meeting we do um, to make sure that these meetings are accessible for folks of different abilities. And uh, Lindsay came in late. I want to shout out Lindsay from the Mayor's Neighborhood Services team. She was actually late because she was out flyering in another community door to door about another meeting. Did any of you hear about this meeting because you got a flyer at your door? I know they were out last week flyering about this one. Um, but just so you all know, Lindsay has just joined the team and she has been assigned as the um, permanent liaison for this section of the north side. So uh, please stop by and introduce yourself to her afterwards. Um, lastly, we have two flyers here that we would love if you all would take and help um, share with your neighbors. One is about lifeguard recruitment. Um, I'm sure you've probably all heard of this spiel before, but in case you haven't, uh, the, the number of lifeguards we're able to recruit directly impacts the number of pools we are able to open and operate uh, for our, our families and our community members. So please, if you know anyone who you think could be a good lifeguard, they don't even need to have past experience. We will train them, we will certify them. It's a fairly decent wage. The city's really invested in this job. I think the average wage is now, uh, depending on experience, raised between $16 and $19 an hour to be a lifeguard. Um, and then um, if you know any young people, if you have any in your house, if you have any in your street, please take um, some of the orange flyers, which are about the city's um, summer learn and earn program. And that is a program for kids ages 14 to 21 to get paid career opportunities throughout the summer at a variety of businesses and organizations around the city. Um, so with that, thank you Mike and Patty for all your work, uh, for teaching us about all of these crazy traffic terms, um, and for everything you're doing to try to make this corridor safe for the folks who live here. Um, we'll be around, grab us afterwards if you have questions. Thank you folks at home. Thank you Heather from City Channel. Have a good night.